Hi, welcome to another Inventor tutorial. In this tutorial, we're just going to do a basic gear, uh, gearing system and show you how to do some really, really basic constraints around uh, the, get the motion constraints. Throughout the process, we'll also I'll show you the how to create individual eye parts within uh, an assembly, um, so that you can uh, you can do that process as well, um, and just really look at the gear ratios and how you can really do some really simple uh, gear designs and gear ratios in Inventor really quickly. So let's jump on in and see where we end up. So I've come straight into a part file. Uh, I'm only actually going to draw one component, which is the gear. I'm going to do it pretty quickly. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail. There is a full tutorial actually in my AutoCAD tutorials on how to uh, properly spec gears uh, for design purposes. So I'm just going to start a two dimensional sketch on, a, on the vertical plane. And I will just uh, start with a circle of a 30 mil diameter. I'll put another circle in the middle, which is where our shaft will go, which we'll do at 10 mil diameter. Um, and we'll start, uh, we'll draw a little tooth on the top here. Um, so we'll just do a couple of lines. That's a circle, we need a line. We'll do a couple of lines. And we'll just create a standard looking tooth. We'll, we'll constrain it in two seconds. That one didn't, it wasn't horizontal, so we'll just draw that again. That's uh, because we're slightly off axis. That's why it was looking like it wasn't horizontal. So there is our tooth. We'll just do some quick time, uh, constraints. I'll constrain the center of the uh, top line with the center point of this circle. So it brings it into alignment directly on the center line. Uh, we'll dimension the uh, tooth width at the top to 1.5 mil. Um, and we'll also dimension the angles um, and we'll dimension them to be exactly the same as each other. And I'll change them to 115 degrees. Um, you could do all sorts of different things uh, here. You could put some radiuses in the corners. You could actually put a uh, an arc uh, between the top and bottom points so you've got some sort of arc giving a better gear uh, shape like I said the tutorial for that is in my AutoCAD tutorials um, but for what we want this will be fine so uh, the only other dimension that I might want to think about is from the uh, circum circumference of the circle we'll make that a nice round one mil uh, no we'll go to 1.5 mil there we go. Uh, we'll finish the sketch and we will now just extrude our main body. We'll extrude it 5 mil. Click OK. The sketch we need to turn the visibility on because we're going to use that now to extrude the tooth. And uh, we'll just extrude it to the same width. And now we'll do a circular array of the feature is our tooth. Then our axis is the surface, outside surface of the actual uh, gear. And the number of teeth, we, uh, I think I'll try 22, uh, maybe 23. 23 looks a little bit better, so we'll click OK on that. Uh, and we will... Uh, hide the visibility of our sketch. So there we have our gear. Uh, I'm actually going to just do one gear 
and in the assembly I'll set the gear ratio and I'll show you how you can actually sort of trick it to say that you might have two gears of exactly the same size but you can have different gear ratio so that one turns twice as fast as the other it won't actually work but it just gives you in real life but it just gives you an idea of how you can do very very simple gearing systems so we'll come across and save that call it gear one and we will save that and then we'll just start an assembly so we'll put and place uh, two gears here in this assembly we'll just randomly place them for a minute um, and uh, I'm going to constrain the first one around an origin so I'm actually going to use an axis which will be our z-axis so I'll turn the visibility of that on and I'm just going to constrain the center axis of the first gear to the axis, the Z axis. Apply that and it should rotate. It just moves forwards and backwards, which we'll deal with in a bit. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the shaft uh, in this actual assembly. So over here in the assemble, we have this create component, uh, which allows us to bring in the sort of part drawing area into this assembly. So I'll create an assembly. Um, I'm going to call it shaft, sorry, create a part. I'm going to uh, call it shaft, standard R part, standard I parts, and uh, the new file location, which is in my gears folder. Click OK. Um, and we can now uh, specify the plane for the base feature. So I'm going to actually specify the plane is the um, uh, I'll actually I'll stick it on a hot vertical plane which will be our XY plane of the origin of the actual uh, assembly. So here we are. Um, we can start a, you can see that the actual assembly is greyed out so we can't actually do anything on the assembly and we've started our new part shaft uh, 1. Uh, and you just draw it as any, any particular other way you draw a part. Uh, all the part modeling uh, uh, abilities are just now in the assembly. So I'll start a 2D sketch um, and I will start a 2D sketch on my XY plane and I'm going to just project the geometry of the center hole of our gear, finish the sketch and I will now extrude that uh, 30 mil. Click OK and I can now use the return uh, function at the end here to return myself back to uh, the assembly. Uh, so here we have our gear, it's rotating on our shaft uh, but it can move forwards and backwards on it so we all just can now constrain our uh, faces together. Uh, we need to make them as a flush and we'll apply them. And now the gear rotates on the actual uh, um, shaft itself. So we'll now, what we're going to do now is I'll constrain the uh, the faces together of the actual gears, uh, and we'll make them flush as well. Click apply, and we will now move them apart slightly to line them up. Uh, you might want to come to the exact front view so that you can get them lined up neatly. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, that's good. Um, and now we'll just, uh, we could just uh, do the, uh, draw the other shaft now in exactly the same way. So we'll, uh, this time we're gonna have a plane. I'll put a plane on the front of this uh, gear itself at zero millimeters from the front. I'll create another uh, part, which is our shaft two. Click OK, select the plane that we want to draw on. And now we'll start a two dimensional sketch 
on that plane. We'll project that geometry again, finish the sketch, and now extrude it. This time we'll extrude it the other way, 30 mil. Click OK. Return ourselves back to our assembly. We can hide now the visibility of the work planes that we've got. Um, and now we've got to do, so uh, we I would ground this shaft before it moves. Um, the We already have it sort of constrained to that uh, particular shaft because we drew it on there. Um, and they now work independently. So now we have to create the, the actual constraint. So in our relationships in constraint, we're going to now do a motion constraint along the top here, assembly motion transitional. We're going to just do a motion constraint. We've got two solutions. The gears can both go for, uh, the same way or they can go uh, opposite each other and reverse direction. We'll choose the reverse direction. And we're just going to select the two gears that uh, we want to want to rotate opposite. Now our ratio is set as one to one. Now that's fine because our gears are exactly the same uh, dimensions. And therefore when we apply that, uh, we now have a one to one gear ratio that the gear will rotate at one to one. Now we can actually uh, manipulate that somewhat by editing our relationship and for instance, put in uh, four to one. So one gear will run four times faster than the other. So if I now rotate one, you can see the other one is, is actually doing four times the distance. Uh, it clashes, obviously, so that's not really going to help us. Um, but you could then go back and scale uh, your um, or redraw your gears to be what, you know, four times the size of of each other. So that's a, a really, really quick way of doing some very basic gears. Uh, and it's not going to work for all situations. But if you're just trying to do some really basic gears or a simple gearing system, then uh, then that's a, it's actually quite a good way of doing it. And obviously, we've also introducing the create function within an assembly so you can draw uh, parts that you might have forgotten, for instance, or didn't think you needed, you can actually draw them in an assembly as well. Um, when you save it, uh, save this assembly, it will create the individual parts. Um, and I can show you that now. So if I go click Save As, uh, I will save the assembly as uh, Assembly 1. We get this pop-up here, multiple files and so on and so forth. We'll just Yes to All and OK. Um, and if I then look at my file directory, which I'll just bring across. Uh, uh, here's my file directory for this assembly. I've got assembly one, gear one, shaft and shaft two as I parts. So it's created those I parts for us um, in the, through the save function. So thanks for watching um, and uh, come back soon for another Inventor tutorial.